while researching and looking for information on the amazing digital circus to turn them into dragons in a recent video on the channel, I stumbled across this series that had a couple of episodes, and its name is Monkey Wrench, the creation of Joshua and Ashley Palmer. If you want to check it out, I've put a link to their YouTube channel in the description. With that said, I thought it'd be quite fun to take the characters from the series and to turn them into SCPs. Let's bring these illustrations to life. Good afternoon, I'm Agent 005-1. Today's briefing was originally going to be held by the director of the containment facility. However, Director O'Farley has had to meet off-site with the O5 Council. As such, I will be taking today's briefing. Let's begin, shall we? Item SCP-MW-001. Object classification, Keta. Special containment procedures. SCP-MW-001 is not allowed to make a bet with Foundation staff. Any attempt to do so must immediately be rejected by staff and spoken out loud within 10 seconds of the bet being offered by this SCP. Failure to do so will trigger a set of events that will lead to the completion of whatever outcome was bet by SCP-MW-001. Interactions with SCP-MW-001 must be conducted without getting closer than 5 metres from this entity. If a Foundation member is closer than this distance, they are within the range of SCP-MW-001's ability to use a gem-like feature on the back of its head. SCP-MW-001 can utilise this gem-like jewel to absorb anything it chooses within this distance. At this point, it must be noted that SCP-MW-001 has absorbed several D-class personnel into this gem-like feature, only to release them hours later drained of their life force leaving withered husks within the containment cell. This was recorded as incident SCP-MW-001-A. Foundation scientists believe that there is a storage limit to this gem. However, without entering and returning in one piece, the details of this limit are unknown. It is speculated, however, that anything absorbed is sent to a kind of pocket dimension. Foundation staff are advised to ensure that SCP-MW-001 is not enraged by any sudden changes that are not discussed with the entity before happening. It has been seen that this entity has two advanced forms of blasters stored within the gem. These blasters, although advanced in design as well as the energy they use, do not seem to have the amount of energy used when SCP-MW-001 goes off on a tangent or short-tempered rage. The use of these blasters by the entity has thus far been contained by the containment cell's reinforced walls. If SCP-MW-001 does appear to go into a full outburst or rage or anger, the Foundation staff are required to immediately administer level 3 amnestic gas, although this will only remove the last 30 minutes of SCP-MW-001's memory. If administered within the first 30 minutes of the rage or outburst, the memory that triggered this outburst will also be erased. The Foundation is not sure how long the amnestics will work on SCP-MW-001. As such, alternative means of containment are being discussed by the O5 Council. Description SCP-MW-001 is a rather scrawny-looking humanoid entity with tan colour skin and spiky hair, like appendages from its head. These appendages are also tan in colour. Due to this, the boys in the lab have given SCP-MW-001 the affectionate name of Squidhead. Despite this, the entity has a gem-like feature in the back of its head. It has been observed that items can be stored as well as retrieved from this jewel. SCP-MW-001 has a sharp triangular chin at the bottom of a narrow head. The eyes of SCP-MW-001 are yellow in colour, similar to someone with jaundice although the pupils are red. SCP-MW-001 appears to be in a red suit, which also has red fingerless gloves, a ragged greyish blue jacket, which looks like it has been shot featuring some holes and scorch marks. SCP-MW-001, although predominantly organic, has a technological collar that does go around the back of its neck. The collar is grey in colour and has a crescent shape. There is also a light blue glow coming from the collar. Its purpose is still unknown. However, the Foundation has confirmed the material making up the inorganic parts of SCP-MW-001 is not known on the periodic table or anything in Foundation records. 
it is most likely from another world or dimension, but this is yet to be confirmed. The attire on the feet of SCP-MW001 are comprised from the same materials as the crescent-shaped collar. This footwear is red, silver and cyan in colour, comprising of more technological elements. The personality of SCP-MW001 is that of a child. SCP-MW001 is often short-tempered, selfish, although it does seem to have some kind of ambitious nature. It has been observed that once containment of SCP-MW-001 was successful and the attempts of this SCP to escape the containment cell were unsuccessful, it exhibited an extremely impatient nature, especially when it came to change in a situation. SCP-MW-001 started to get comfortable being in containment. This entity is somewhat of an adrenaline junkie and is often trying to persuade Foundation staff to perform more elaborate tests often seeking a thrill from the encounters to provide an adrenaline fix. Often seeking a thrill from encounters to provide an adrenaline fix. Due to this, his speed and agility, along with his combative performance during previous escape attempts, we believe that SCP-MW-001 is a well-trained fighter in its home dimension, a dimension we have yet to confirm anything about. Dimension SCP-MW-000. The Foundation has confirmed that SCP-MW-001 switches between English and Spanish when talking. We are unsure how this SCP knows these two languages, although it has led to an easier time gathering some information about the reality it comes from. According to SCP-MW-001, it's a type of bounty hunter or merc travelling through space with SCP-MW-002. The pair seem to collect bounties in... What the Foundation has recorded is a rather tragic attempt to forge a path to riches as mercenaries. <laughs> Item SCP-MW-002 Object Class Keter Foundation staff interacting with this entity. Foundation staff interacting with either entity are forbidden from mentioning their respective SCPs to each other. If at any time this happens, a level 3 amnestic gas is to be administered on the informed entity, while the Foundation staff member is removed from the area and also subjected to amnestics. The staff member is then moved on to other procedures within the containment facility. As with SCP-MW-001, if SCP-MW-002 begins to get enraged, amnesic gas is to be administered. SCP-MW-002 is to be contained in a cell with a localised EMP field. This field is to remain active at all times, and is not to be turned off unless under the explicit order of the O5 Council. Furthermore, all electronic devices which are EMP resistant are not allowed within the containment cell. If the devices were to come into contact with SCP-MW-002, this would allow the entity to become immune to the EMP effects that are preventing the technological components from working. Foundation staff of level 4 are to check the magnetic lock on the shoulder of the mechanical arm of SCP-MW-002. This lock was added by Foundation scientists and must be checked after sedation of SCP-MW-002. Checking of the lock should take no longer than 10 minutes. If a Foundation staff member goes over the allotted time, they are to be locked in the containment cell of SCP-MW-002. Records on file for the staff member will note that they died during a procedural error. Surrounding the outside of SCP-MW-002's containment cell are eight jamming devices that prevent any form of electronic communication on multiple wavelengths from coming into contact with the cybernetic components on the head of this entity. Should SCP-MW-002 appear to become resistant to the EMP effect of the containment cell, Foundation staff should send in D-Class personnel to distract SCP-MW-002 while the powerful magnetic flooring is activated. After activating the magnetic flooring, it is to remain on until SCP-MW-002 has been sedated. At this point, SCP-MW-002 is to be secured in the containment cell once confirmation of sedation has been established. Description SCP-MW-002 
is what appears to be a human with a rather large belly, large muscular arms, one of which is mechanical in nature. SCP-MW-002 also appears to have a pair of mechanical legs. These cybernetic parts of the body of SCP-MW-002 are fully integrated into the organic parts of its body, and despite scans of the entity, the Foundation has been unable to figure out how such a complex cybernetic enhancement could have been carried out. SCP-MW-002 is a large, tall, stout entity, claiming to be from a race in the dimension known as a Warrenian. SCP-MW-002 has light brown skin, blue eyes, and a beard, wearing a dark grey t-shirt with the word beard across it in white lettering. There's also a glove on the left hand of SCP-MW-002. Foundation scientists are unsure of the purpose of this glove. However, tests reveal it to be a regular glove despite being made out of another unknown material. Combining the advanced tech and the cybernetic alterations to the body of this entity, scientists at the Foundation have concluded the dimension or origin of the MW classification of SCPs contains advanced technological elements. Although the Foundation has collected a wide array of technological advancements over the years, the materials for the cybernetic parts of SCP-MW-002 are to date not found in any records held by the Foundation. This has the Foundation scientists on edge, understandably working around the clock to find a way to damage or destroy this material, despite the excitement of working on something new and unknown. SCP-MW-002 is a rather bulky humanoid entity with a rather dangerous combination of brains and brawn. This entity has shown high levels of intelligence, calm and showing extreme levels of patience. SCP-MW-002 has also been able to talk Foundation staff into providing regular deliveries of pizza to the containment cell. Initially, the Foundation, upon discovering this, put an end to the influx of pizza meals to SCP-MW-002. Unfortunately, this led to the entity becoming rather unstable and pushed the containment cell to its limits. SCP-MW-002 seems to be one of the few SCPs held by the Foundation, who have managed to strike a deal leading to a mutual understanding that the entity will not try to escape. In exchange, the Foundation will provide both SCP-MW-002 and SCP-MW-001 a regular supply of pizza. Okay, a bit of a shameless plug. If you like the artwork on the channel, why not join Patreon for just £5 a month where you can get all the artwork from the videos along with inks. They normally come out a day before or on the day of a video. Alternatively, you could be a member on the channel. There's two tiers and you get access to the artwork, members only posts and the stylish emojis and badges that can be used in the comments. Item SCP-MW-003 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-MW-003 is to be contained within the containment cell with no valuable items. Foundation staff are not allowed to enter the containment cell unless level 4 amnestics have been administered, followed by D-class personnel being sent to confirm SCP-MW-003 is unconscious. After confirmation, SCP-MW-003 is to be secured using level 4 restraints. At any time, no Foundation staff are allowed in the containment cell without first sending in D-Class personnel to test the mood of SCP-MW-003. Since SCP-MW-003 likes to solve everything with extreme violence. Combined with the fact that the Foundation has yet to find a way to prevent the prosthetic arm of SCP-MW-003 from turning into a chainsaw. If, in the event, SCP-MW-003 does attempt to attack the walls and entrance of the containment cell, the following procedure must be followed. The large electromagnet surrounding the containment cell is to be activated in order to incapacitate the lethal form of SCP-MW-003's arm. If this fails, then the next failsafe is to be implemented immediately by Level 4 Foundation staff. The containment cell is fitted with an advanced cooling system, which will flash freeze for a short period of time anything that's in the cell. This was a containment method based on other reptilian SCPs. 
if the vitals of SCP-MW-003 drop to certain levels during the flash freeze, automatic heating within the containment cell will activate in order to keep SCP-MW-003 alive while the Foundation continues its research into this entity. SCP-MW-003 also has the containment procedure of being kept separate from the other SCPs from SCP-MW-000. Although SCP-MW-003 does not seem to get along overly well with the other entities from this dimension, it has been discovered that through interactions, these entities have had regular encounters, which on occasion they have worked together. As such, the Foundation has arranged the containment cells to be in different areas of the containment facility, while awaiting approval of transportation to separate containment locations. Description scp MW-003 is a humanoid-type dinosaur with a blue body and a cream-coloured underbody. This entity has yellow eyes and cat-like slit pupils with an orange tone around the eyes. The hands of SCP-MW-003 are three-fingered, one being that of her own body. However, it is noted there is a crimson prosthetic arm with four sharp claws. A two-coloured type of mohawk is on the head of the entity with a scar running along the beak of its mouth. The sharp teeth of SCP-MW-003 are yellow in colour. This entity also has purple spikes on its arms and seems to be clothed in a crimson attire. While capturing SCP-MW-003 during incident SCP-MW-003-A, it was discovered that this entity was able to speak English. We're not sure how this is possible, but it could be due to the tech in the prosthetic arm of this entity. Foundation scientists theorised that there might be a translation device as a part of the tech. It was discovered that SCP-MW-003 can use the mechanical arm to create a type of chainsaw. This chainsaw is capable of cutting through most armour and several D-class personnel. Upon interactions with SCP-MW-003 after containment, it was established that this entity is a female member of its species and refers to itself from time to time as, as Queenie Weenie. Queen of the Space Pirates. With that said, SCP-MW-003 was keen to see what items it could take from Foundation facilities. As such, Foundation staff are not to take anything that has any value or could aid this entity in escaping from its containment cell. SCP-MW-003 has been observed to have a rather short temper when infuriated, normally if the entity makes a mistake or if it is shown up. This will send the entity into a frenzy-like rage. If this happens, Foundation staff are to use amnestic gas to contain SCP-MW-003. However, it has been shown that SCP-MW-003 will come out of the frenzy after 30 minutes. Amnestic gas is required due to the strength of SCP-MW-003 to ensure the entity does not breach containment. Many D-Class personnel were lost, I believe is the nicest term, the D-Class were, while trying to test the strength of SCP-MW-003 under supervision of Foundation scientists, it was at this point a rather unique personality trait was recorded. SCP-MW-003 preferred to solve most situations with violence. It is recommended that no interaction by Foundation staff is to occur within the containment cell unless it requires the use of level 4 amnestics to render the entity unconscious. <laughs> Item SCP-MW-004 Object Class Keta Special Containment Procedures under no circumstance, unless ordered by the O5 Council, are any Foundation staff allowed to enter the containment cell of SCP-MW-004. Only D-Class personnel are permitted to enter and perform any task required by Foundation staff. SCP-MW-004 has shown that it can dispatch numerous D-Class and Foundation personnel during the capturing stage. As such, extra security has been placed outside the containment cell. Foundation guards are not permitted to speak to SCP-MW-004 in order to reduce the amount of information this entity is able to gather. The containment cell walls are made from a reinforced 10-inch thick alloy. 
this ally has shown a resistance to the clause of SCP-MW-004. Regular checks on the containment walls are to be administered by D-Class personnel on a weekly basis. Upon finding any substantive damage to the containment cell, level 4 amnestic gas is to be administered. SCP-MW-004 is then to be secured by three teams of the Foundation's elite guards in the event this entity regains consciousness. During this time, excessive force is permitted and Foundation staff are to approach SCP-MW-004 with the intent to use lethal force. Any attempts to use less force will result in the entity escaping containment and disposing of Foundation staff within the containment facility. Description SCP-MW-004 is a humanoid entity possessing similar features to that of a caracal-like feline. However, the species is unknown. Like SCP-MW-003, SCP-MW-004 appears to be a female member of its species, covered in brown fur with a cream muzzle. This entity has long flexible ears, dark eyelids, and cyan eyes. SCP-MW-004 has razor-sharp retractable black claws and pads on the palms just like those of any feline. The entity is also covered in a cobalt blue catsuit, covering the entire body up to its neck. The fingers and toes of SCP-MW-004 are not covered by the cobalt suit. SCP-MW-004 also has a white mask which seems to appear on its face when it is trying to hide its intentions or assassinate a target. Due to the nature and skill set of SCP-MW-004, only D-Class personnel are permitted to enter the containment cell. Foundation staff of level 3 or above are to guard SCP-MW-004 to ensure this entity does not escape. It has been noted that the entity, although calm and displaying a loner-like attitude, has no hesitation of dispatching of anything that it deems in the way of its objective. The hands, or rather paws, of SCP-MW-004 are just like those of any feline with retractable claws. Upon study of the bodies from slain D-Class, Foundation scientists have determined that these claws are capable of slicing through most materials, due to a unique level of sharpness, combined with the dense mass compacted into the claws. As such, any attempts to escape by slashing the walls or entrance to the containment cell are to be met by excessive force. To admit, I didn't expect to come across this series while doing research for the amazing Digital Circus of Dragons video which dropped recently on the channel. But I have to say, I really enjoyed the first two episodes. I'm looking forward to the third one when it comes out. As such, I've put a link in the description to the channel in case any of you guys want to watch it or check out the series. Hopefully, you'll enjoy it as much as I did. If you like this video, why not check out the other SCP videos on the channel? We've got turning Yu-Gi-Oh monsters into SCPs. There's even one where I take superhero characters and I make them into SCPs. I think we've got a Pokemon SCP video. And at some point, we did venomize a few SCPs. Maybe we should do another round of that in the future. Anyway, I'll see you all in Monday's live stream, which will be finishing off our Giratina illustration. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.